here uh, as as with watercolor i use all the cadmiums which is cadmium yellow orange red i already had uh, the other red um vermilion red nearby i took it out i do use vermilion sometimes uh, when i don't need warmer red and then alizarin red uh now these two paints i had abandoned for years and years It's only maybe last year that I started using my yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And coming here always uh, cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. And again uh, like in any watercolor or any other paint. Now both of these are cobalt blue. I had them out just to show you that one is Grumbacker one is Uh, Vincent Newton. It might be gone back or some other cheaper wrap, a dull rawny one. But j- these are both ca- cobalt blue, and you can see the difference. It's much more vibrant and much darker in rawny case. Uh, I I am going to take out my other, which I don't actually recommend, but. Uh, Pathyla blue or Prussian blue, some darker kind of blue, but uh, use that dark blue, either of one, uh, either of those two, very carefully, and only if you you are able to control it. Uh, they are very invasive and they can make your painting very dark. But I cannot paint without them. So a Prussian blue. I'm going to use. Can you some Prussian? Did you can you show your colors again, please? Let me take the paint. Just just the palette. I just want to yeah, Okay, I will. I will. Just let me take the paint out. So that I am. Again. Okay. Here. Okay. And uh, again, I would suggest that when you take out the colors, uh, keep your warmers on one side and coolers on other side or take them out like you know the colors of spectrum yellow and then yellow orange red you don't really need to have greens those are all the colors like greens or any premixes colors you can use it uh, especially when you are in a paint out or a quick draw that saves time for mixing otherwise for basic painting i think these colors are enough. and i'll talk about patello blue or which one prussian blue later so the approach up the approach to painting in oil is pretty much the same as uh, watercolor not the technique but laying your composition down on the paper uh the i will be painting from the reference photo that i shared anything else and any question while i'm sending her an email right so do you use a a solvent for your medium and your cleaning or yeah or? i don't uh, you if if you have your uh, paints freshly out on the palette you don't actually need any medium because they have nice viscosity okay but if you do need to you may use a sa- uh, sunflower oil safflower or yeah safflower actually or or uh, linseed oil okay. but then there are uh, different kind of gels also some artists use which is also good and they those gels <coughs> uh make the drying time faster okay so i will be using uh, <coughs> solvent definitely i do use solvent this is a uh, terpenoid if not gamsol i i use one or the other and they are both the same thing um and i use like there is no solvent then what 
then the gels uh they are always solvents um unless what is tanned so, oil huh what is tanned oil can i okay, use that tanned oil linseed tanned oil um is a thicker process linseed oil it, and it takes much longer for the painting to dry oh I, okay i don't use that. don't like using it flower oil it's uh actually most paints have safflower oil in it as binding me safflower s a f f l o w r safflower yeah or you or walnut oil also oh, i have yeah. that i have that yeah walnut oil is also like in linseed so but linseed oil is also good Yeah all these oils are used as medium uh and you can also find painting medium i don't like smell of it and i don't like using it but um but solvent i i use solvent for blocking in and you will see uh unlike <clears throat> unlike oil, watercolor we go from dark to light but again these are all the rules which are helpful but uh, also flexible let me pull up my photo i will be using that uh, photo that i shared so have that out if you need to <clears throat> and in a photo you will notice how the main alley or uh, you know what it was it was actually uh, this photograph was taken in winter one one uh what event was it it was sodest event for holidays uh that's that's how that wreath comes here which we will be painting again with no detail but indication Again, it's uh, my habit to hold my brushes in my hand. I don't suggest it. I have lots of problem with my ankles. Okay. Uh, I think so far. I'm happy. Let's get some of the shadows. It's a bright day. So what we see around the shadow is some bright streak warm streak The way your brush moves and the way you put your strokes down is also important in creating the flow and the flow of the painting should lead again it is all for for visual um journey so the flow should lead the viewer eye toward your main You had said you use you know cad. So is your what's your primary cad yellow? Is it medium or is it light? 
Uh, right now it's medium. I am using less colors. Um, uh, that's that's pretty much what I use, unless I do need a deep medium. It all depends uh, if there is such a demand for that color. But I have uh, you missed. You were not here, so let me show you my palette. I'm I'm not using too many colors. I all see. the mediums, all the cadmiums on the left and blues which include cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and prussian blue. Uh, for prussian blue, I do use prussian blue for my darks, really dark dark. I don't use prussian blue to make colors. I will not recommend because it's very invasive and it gets, it makes your painting very dark. Well, remember that mm -hmm. I have abandoned my paints and so I'm glad that you're using this particular approach because I was thinking when I made my move that you know if I do bring on colors in oils which I don't have any oils around now yeah. I want to simplify because I felt like I had yeah. way too many colors and when you have mm -hmm. I find when you have too many colors you have too many bits of color all over the place because they're there whereas like what you're doing right now you are limited in colors so you're creating the colors that are you know no, not in a tube yeah, you are so right. And you know what? I used to use a lot of colors too. And I <laughs> uh, I remember so many artists, they they talked a lot about minimal, uh, you know, limited palette and all that. I said, why? <laughs> why would I limit my palette? But you know, then it is too confusing to use too many colors and keep it simple. Especially when you're trying to recreate a bit of color on the painting that you have, you want to match it, then you have to remember, okay, what colors should I use? That's right. You have to, you know, decide ahead what color is going to be um, the prominent one in your painting. Um, in this case, you know, the light is quite warm and so are the shadows. They are... They are they are very neutral, not too, they are not too cool, but not too warm. There is some warmth shining on the shadows as well, right? Uh -huh. um, because it's a, a cold day. Winter light is really interesting because the shadows are not necessarily very cool. You do see some warm reflections on your shadows too. Which I like to get here. So that's what I um, meant when I said I had to unlearn so many things because there was there were certain formulas that we were taught and that I used to just carry with me all the time. And also, you know, observing nature is a great practice, but don't be slave to it. We are not here to copy nature. So create your own version. The light here in Seattle is really interesting, but we are just coming out of the winter, so I haven't really gotten the full scope of it yet, but the brightness of the light is really much more intense than Southern California. It's, maybe it's air pollution, I don't know. I have a feeling it's more like the placement of the sun in the sky, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's cool. I'm good. I like to keep this horizontal line prominent. So that's a beauty of oil painting. You can get rid of that. Yeah, I like to get because that. Well, I hope this line is straight because I'm painting from the side. Let me let me go back and have a view. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm going to give a wash on my ground. Keeping, again, I will be mixing with knife. Your cobalt as a background to my is my head covering the canvas or oh, you can see it it is covering the canvas oh that's why I was painting from the side okay Oops. I can stand behind the camera oh okay why didn't I think of it? Oh. <laughs> Keep dropping my brushes. So it's basically dark against light, light against dark at this point. Whether this dog is here or not, uh, I'm not much concerned about that. I am only following the composition and adding my tones. The important thing is the flow. Avoid solid continuous line because that's too distracting and it uh, stops the eye from traveling around. There should be a little element of surprise, so leave your lines undone at certain places. Yeah, th this is in shadow and here on this surface we see reflected light which I'll cover later. 
love to take it away so this is my new passion or obsession now paint well i have started to take away more and paint less now which is much more fun okay a little bit of cadmium red and a bit of ultramarine blue to add a little warmer a oh, little warmer darker shadow here to do that mix of ultramarine and cadmium red not a some red I'm going to add that mix that I made of cadmium red and ultramarine blue and white I'm going to create this bottle and this is going to be my mix that I will be adding to my shadows. So the shadow is not purely that mix. It is that mix mixed with my already mixed puddles. The edges can be softer. Is your cadmium red a medium? Oh, uh, it just said it just said cadmium red. red. Yeah, it's not light. It's not light. Okay. It's not dark. That that's what I know. It is not definitely. Not dark. Uh, it can be either light or medium. You know, it really doesn't matter that much. This little detail, it can it gives the same. We are not matching colors, so it gives kind of the same result. I am usually not too mindful of the, the little uh, details because you know it's too well, much. <laughs> if I was only going to get one cadmium red, yeah, um, medium, medium at yeah. all, right? Yeah. Okay. Because would... you can make it darker. If you want cooler dark, you can mix alizarin with it, and if you want warmer dark, you can add uh, burnt sienna with it. So medium would, I think, would be better. Okay. This beautiful warm shadow underneath the the door, maybe because there is a artificial bulb inside the shop but although it's lovely but i'm not going to get it it's not helping my composition you know i do have those uh, brushes in my hand i just as you can see so what do i i don't separate them from cool and dark but if my make, my brush has white mix in it, a mix which has white paint in it, I will not be using this brush to make my dogs. So that's the only separation I have in mind. Uh, white makes it too opaque and uh, where it is not needed, it uh, takes away from your painting or the flow. Did someone just join us? No, that was me. The other thing is white will kind of cool it off too, which maybe wouldn't be your intent. Mm -hmm. White is opaque and it lightens, but sometimes it cools it down too. 
So oh, well, it cools it down when you want to make it. If you don't want to make it, it just makes it more chalky. White is very tricky. Position for this one, in case you want to add that detail. Next, that. And now, <laughs> head in the background. I have this. Someone is wearing this blue shirt. It needs a head. That can be just. But this is made to be very prominent. Let me see. A bit of blue and a bit of this one. You know, if you if you were doing this in pastels and where you have the transitioning of the warm to the cool and all that stuff, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Do you just kind of smush them together? Yeah, I do. Some people don't do, do that. They, yeah, they, they don't. And they some people do smudge. I oh well, I have recently started smudging also, but still, this I like to mix, rub it into each other. That's what I was thinking because Nyla. You know, uh, one of the participants, Nyla, is really good at uh, pastels. When we have our break, we, are, we will talk about each other, introduce. Uh, this one's okay, at least you know that she's facing this way. Oh. Maybe too big. But haha, -ha, we are painting in oil, we can always correct it. Okay. And now the hair or the her hair. She has White hair, all grey. So this is my trick, my secret weapon to have the bright spot in light. Ah. I forgot to <laughs> record. Okay, here we have this detail. So the detail again, let me repeat, the detail we need is not detail of the features, but this tiny detail of tones okay here and now this fellow his arm needs to go
so you know such uh, details or they give the impression that you know it is done in no, no time but i have spent more time in giving this you know giving these details which give the more spontaneous kind of uh, impression it is done very carefully when you have to say less it has to be more accurate and more precise and then a little shadow under her hair and now in the background I think I work in Alo Prima because I don't know how to work other, any other way it's really hard to paint over the painted surface in oil painting so I like to keep it fresh and put the colors in one go okay and now coming to some details of the shadow There is no criteria that a quick painting is better than slow painting, but it's good to keep the energy going in your work. So, so the only detail that we need to give is the feet and not much more on your figures and why because the feet are also creating a nice pattern on the floor Taking off I feel small too. The best one that I like this spatula, the baking spatula, which is actually dirty at the moment, I didn't clean it. You just have to scrape off the paint from, from it. Ah, since it's dirty, it's not working. Okay, 
Is that it? No, I didn't. Took it off altogether. Just again. Okay, got it. Now the highlights. Okay, let's go to the re reflected light first. Reflected light appears to be lighter visually because it's surrounded by the dots. And since it's a reflection of light, it is uh, warmer in temperature than the surrounding. Repeat reflected light again, the warm and cool part that you said I, I got yeah. distracted. <laughs> yeah, reflected light is usually found on the darker area. It why we call reflected because you know all that dark shadow area, the light from from the ground here would be reflecting on the wall here. So since it's a reflection of this warm light on the on the wall here, it will be a warmer section on that wall and it will appear to be lighter because it's surrounded by the dark. But usually when we, warping, when we are showing a reflected light, we tend to go more light on that area. Just squint your eye and compare the value. It's, it's much darker than how it appears. Oops. Okay, I just brushed my shirt. My 30-year-old shirt that I wear every winter. <laughs> For some reason, when I think of reflected light, I read it somewhere or something, and I thought of it as, as the light bouncing off of the lighted surface onto the other surface. And for some reason, the word bounce seems, I don't know, more illustrative. Yeah, but it is you know, factual. It's reflective. I understand that, but it's like it's the light coming down bounces up to the other thing, but it is reflective. You know what I mean? It's just semantics. You know something? When in uh, well, my sister and I usually uh, talk of a teacher uh, from a college, and uh, yeah, well, I always remember her. She used to say that, you know, there is no local, pure local color in any object because all the surrounding colors do reflect on that. The other, like an apple, if you place an apple with a pear, 
So they both are going to reflect their colors on each other. That happens in nature. Well, it's interesting because. And uh, let me first do more white and very little yellow. Avoid hard edge when painting. I I don't mind hard edges around the shadow. Oh no, I mean the darker area, not shadow, but the dark objects. But well, you have to see some some areas need more a harder outline, or and the other ones more blended. See, I am covering that canvas that I have left white with my paint, but I cannot get the same brilliance on the painted surface if I becomes kind of chalky and dark and muddy. Not hard. See, it's easy to get the light. Avoid repeating shapes. So, do I cannot have two dots? Similar looking dots. I will be. Making this one more vertical. Mix it on the palette and not on the canvas. Since I didn't mix it on the can palette. So in a distance, it's more horizontal. As you come forward, you can change the direction of your strokes. Let me get another cleaner brush. <laughs> it 
it can go maybe just go with the flow it's like driving your car go with the flow and you can make some turning but not much a bit of orange and red and yellow You don't have to look at your reference photo all the time. Most of the things you add yourself. More important is your painting. Be faithful to your painting and not to the reference photo. It is there to get you started, but that's what all. get the other brush this one get out some nice fresh color detail to the left side it's blending in to the background I was actually too worried about blocking your view so let me go darker than this So now is the time to mix my Prussian blue with Benciana and red and have a warm dark. that doesn't seem to work that much what I'm going to do is adding a tiny bit of light in the background with my blue mixed into my puddle As I go down, I'm adding a bit of a yellow ochre because here I see reflection from the ground. So now it is kind of separated. So I 
So as the time goes, you might find more detail. Maybe tomorrow when you look at your painting, you might want to add uh, just a tiny bit of dab of light here. I like to connect that light with her. And uh, pretty much it. Yes. I am kind of done. <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit of light here. Here. This wall is a little too plain. I might want to add one detail, maybe a one painting hanging or two painting hanging. hanging. Hmm. Yep. This Just brightening up this side too. Well, these are the details that will come later on. Uh, they are not too important, but uh, if you do need to, if you do feel that, that that it might add something, maybe some interest or some brightness to the event. <laughs> We would like to keep it more prominent. This light. Okay. So I'm pretty much done. You can unmute yourself if you want to. And if you need to comment or ask questions. What type of scenes do you look for when you're, uh, when you're photographing? Well, actually, uh, when photographing, I photograph people and I don't think I've ever photographed any landscape. This was an event and I was painting plein air here um, and uh, well I was, I, I'm not too much of a photographer. Uh, this was taken two years ago when I was not even using paint, uh, photographs for my references much and um, but you know I had my booth here and I was painting and uh, it was end of the day, I was losing that light. You you can only paint one painting at a time of that beautiful evening. So I took those photographs, but it was much later that I discovered these photographs and I 
Um, well, I to answer your question, I would say just interesting light and figures. I wondered if you were looking like for the you know the the deep shadows and things like that. Yeah, light and figures. Yeah. Uh, okay. When when there is light, the shadows do. Well, you know, it's inevitable. Lights, the shadow will come there. But it's it's mostly the light around her and and uh, consequently the shadows. Too. My focus is more on the figures and their interesting shapes. Uh, where did I put the mouse now? <laughs> okay, here. So, um, let me look at you guys too. See, no detail of feet or anything, just the light and the flow of the light. That's what I have to say in this painting. Uh, not much more. Um, if, if you may, you know, you can carve out, which is allowed a little bit of light here. If it is not too late, maybe it is too late. But the, I would like to add more light on this area. Okay, like this. Yeah. My brushes here. I will. I will show this light. Wow. So good. I simply love the light on the left of the figure. I just can't take a light paint. Yeah, if I give more detail on the structure or, or other things, that will take away from the people. Mm -hmm. um, I might add, although it's not there, but I might add maybe one stroke of light here. It's, you know, you don't have to be faithful to your reference. Mm. And then I also would like to keep this line. You know, this line, it's not on a photo. I usually leave these whites on the edges which show through when you frame them. <laughs> okay. So that's about all. Let me drag this here. Oh. And then sign my name. It's really wonderful. Oh. Yes, very wonderful. Okay. It's so much better than the uh, reference photograph. It was really interesting to take the watercolor yesterday on the same subject. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> that was so interesting. And I, and I was, I haven't used oil in a long time, but I was using a really wet, drippy like water. Uh -huh. And then I love all those patterns it makes, and then you have to cover them up, <laughs> I guess. You know, the drippy patterns in the oil is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you paint now and uh, paint from the reference. I, I did paint today. Oh, you did? You want to show it? I'm Are not you... so proud of it, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to... I thought it was helpful having done it yesterday. And I, and I didn't think all my paints were... In fact, I couldn't get the lid off my yellow, so I never... <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens all the time with me, don't worry. Find my cobalt. Once she said cobalt, cobalt, I just couldn't find mine because I haven't used it in ages. <laughs> oh, I did move my. I, I did. I was not looking, but I did move my. Whatever. Anyway. You know, now that I'm looking at my work, I feel that this can be a little toned down a little bit. Okay. 
in in the photograph it appears to be more yellow mm-hmm. yeah the, this is not as yellow uh, it's more orange here i don't know why i can see more yellow here but anyway that's the quality of my camera i think it's kind of yellowish okay now, now i'm going to There are efforts with you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, show it to me. You want to see it now or should I should we email it? Well, whatever you feel like. It's up to you. Here's mine. Um, well, uh, the light's not too good in this room. Maybe you can make out. Um, oh, wow. Wow, that's good. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Your figures are so good. They're so real. Yeah. I love it. I'm using um, sketchbook for oil painting. I, I find the surface very smooth, although they're not very helpful to get framed later on. But there is they're good for like oil sketches. Yeah, you know something. There's a big talk about surfaces of canvas. I so far I I didn't really have any problem on uh, most of the canvases, whether expensive or cheaper ones. The only thing is that uh, they warp or they don't last long. So yeah, so it's better to use good quality canvas. All the probably yeah, these pads are good enough. I use they, they they last long. They're good. Which ones are we talking about? Which canvas? Yeah, the canvas pad. They are good. Other way, other way, other way, other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Oh, that's good. Okay. This is my first ever oil painting. There's a chimney. Oh, dear, you did that too. Chimney. Oh, wow. wow. I like the red. Wow. Yes. Your red is better than mine. I was trying to make it warmer. Couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I like. I love it. Yeah. Yes. And I think the shadows, these shadows are good shadows. Shadows on the left. Yeah, blend some of the edges. Not yeah, just uh, somewhere in the middle here. Mm-hmm. Blend yeah. them. A little bit. Is here? Yeah, too hard. I mean, they are okay. they are hard throughout. Blend yeah. some of the areas. Just mm-hmm. keep looking at it and visualize and you know some some light sparkle out of the shadow as well so, i put so, white on it you know and maybe that's why what, what made it harder yeah i had i, it, I, I had it white on my uh, to my shadows too yeah that's fine i like it but um that makes it easier you can you know uh make the shadows a bit okay i you like, share your picture see how i'm doing just Yeah, finger, which are oh, more thick enough. But you know, okay. the light does. No, I will work on it more because <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. This is the first painting ever. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> okay, should I say I, I uh, should I give you homework and do it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe send us. A- Listen. Okay, <laughs> you've you've done it already. You're exempted. You didn't have to off. Still to the watercolor painting as well. Mm-hmm. I have to do that too. Yeah, that's your homework. Watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> so we meet next Wednesday for the uh, watercolor class. Hmm. We meet next uh, when coming Wednesday. I will be sharing uh, another photo photo reference, and it would be the. Same for both medium. Great. Great. Uh, That's a good 